Hello, my name's Fred McNeil, and thank you for watching QAC TV 7. We've started a new weekly program called Thank You for Serving. There are 3,353 veterans, men and women, who live in Queen Anne's County. We have a different veteran come on every week, and you get to meet them and find out where they served, what they did, and there's always a great story to tell or two. And I'm delighted to have with us Robert Sims today. Robert, thank you for I'm coming. Thank Robert you. got, I tied him up and dragged him in here. <laughs> he sure did. We have coffee on Mondays, and then I won't let him leave time. Robert, first of all, thank you, and Happy New Year. Thank you, same Now, year. Robert, let me ask you, how long have you lived in Queen Anne's County? Uh, I lived in Queen Anne's County. I moved over here uh, in 2005. I bought a house over there. We had a house built. But I've lived in Maryland for about, uh, since I was in my early 20s. Okay. Where, where were you born and raised? I was born in a small town called Elkwoods, West Virginia. Oh, you're a West Virginia guy. Yes, I All am. Right. Uh, I'm what they call a, a ridge runner or a hillbilly. <laughs> okay. But uh, I lived there until I was 18, and then I moved to Washington, D.C., because my brother-in-law went to Howard University. Oh, great. The, Har the African-American Harvard University, yes. And I really wanted to go there, so I moved up here in order to talk to him and see if I could go. Right. But, but before I could go, uh, I got the letter from Uncle Sam. Oh, okay. Well, and that's explained. <laughs> Were you drafted? I was drafted. Okay. Now, yes, what year was this? I was drafted in 1965, in September 1965. 65. Now, yeah. as a draftee, how did you end up in the Marines? Well, I, w I wasn't in the Marines. Oh, I was in the you? Army. Oh, okay. My bad. Uh, I had an opportunity to join the Marines, oh, okay. but I didn't want to spend four years in the Marines. <laughs> Nobody wants to I spend I didn't want to spend four <laughs> years, so I decided I'll, I'll just get drafted. So we were all lined up in a, in a room in, in Clarksburg, West Virginia, and they said, all right, uh, everybody who, who, who wants to join the military, take one step forward. Okay. Well, I didn't step up. Everybody else stepped up. And you just I wanted didn't. two years. You didn't want three years. Right. Yes. So they said, well, you're going to be inducted anyway, so you might as well step up. <laughs> you have no choice. Okay. So they went down the row and said, okay, you're going to be in the Army. You're going to be in the Marines. You're going to be here. You're going to be here. And I said, what kind of a choice is this? <laughs> you learned very quickly. Yeah. There are no choices, right? <laughs> I said, give me the two years. I'll join the Army. Good for you. I'll, okay. I'll be drafted to the Army. Now, how old were you when you were drafted? I was 18. Oh, so you were very young. Right out of high school, uh, I spent six months in Washington, D.C., lived with my sister. Like I told you, I was planning on going to school, but I wasn't able to at, at that point. You didn't have a two-edged deferment, so Uncle Sam got you. Yes, he did. Now, when you go back to West Virginia, uh, sports guy, theater guy, what did you do? What were the highlights of youth? Well, I played a lot of baseball, okay. a lot of basketball. I was on a baseball varsity team, a high school team. I was on, the, uh, in my sophomore year, I decided to wrestle. Okay. And I weighed 103 pounds at the time. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I was real skinny. And I won uh, my division in high school at 103 pounds. State championship? Or? No, it oh, was regional. Regional championship. I didn't win the state. But it was fun. Uh, I love basketball more than anything else. Which you coach in, at the high school level. I, I coach basketball from the time... My kids were five and six years old all the way up until they graduated from high school. Okay. And how I got into coaching was, was, was really weird. I went to a uh, basketball game, and the uh, coaches were out there. It wasn't a basketball game. It now was this a trial. is in Queen Anne's County? Right. Queen Anne's County. It, it was at the rec, rec league. Okay, the rec league. And the coaches were out there coaching the kids, but they were playing with them, and they were scoring all the points. I said, this isn't teaching <laughs> the practice. kids anything. It's not practice. <laughs> So my wife said, well, if you think you can do better, then you go coach. <laughs> I said, I will. Good for you. And again, the coaching. So well, let's go back coach. now. 18 years old, drafted. Where was basic training? Basic training was in Fort Devers, Massachusetts. Okay, so you, oh, you were in what time of year? I hope it wasn't the winter. Uh, we got there in September. Okay, wasn't too bad. Uh, we went to Fort Knox first on a bus. And then we went to Fort Devers, Massachusetts. We started a new brigade. They wanted to see how how we would do under different circumstances. Okay. They weren't allowed to uh, curse at us. They weren't allowed to reprimand us. So this was us. a new army. Right. This is a new army. Okay. Right. They were trying something new. 
but we still had to do all the basic stuff. The tough stuff. And uh, we didn't know we were going to Nam. We were up to a training to go to Santa Domingo. Oh, so there's no talk of it. Well, let's, right. let, me, let me keep you in basic. Any, was basic training a good experience? Scared to death? No big deal? What? Basic training was fantastic oh, to okay. me. Okay. Uh, because I was an athlete. Yes. And I was first in all the basic training drills. So you could do all the PT and no problem. No problem. I love to run. I love to do all the exercises. And, and in fact, that's what got me uh, to be a, 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 a PFC early. Uh, because you got I, promoted in basic training. Right. A certain percentage of guys that did a great job. Right. Because then it was all guys, basically. It was all guys. You got promoted. Oh, so you come out of ba uh, basic uh, PFC. Yes. E3, oh, you're making the big bucks. <laughs> well, i got to ask you, my first paycheck in the Army was $98. Do you remember what yours was? I don't remember mine. It was so small. Oh, it was nothing. I never cashed them. I just sent them home to my there mother. You there you yeah. go. So uh, you're in Massachusetts for basic training. Mm -hmm. Where was AIT, Advanced Individual Training? That was done in New York, Camp Drum, New York. Oh, so you stayed on the East Coast. Oh, right. Wow. We were up in Camp Drum, New York, in the wintertime. Oh, no. Uh, snow everywhere. It now, was what, was your, what was your MOS? What were they training you for? Artillery. Oh, you, oh so you were outside. Yeah. Oh, so cool. we were up there. Uh, I, I was a member of the Light Infantry Brigade, uh, the 30th, 82nd Artillery. So we were outside. We were in uh, our white camouflage. Now, this is upstate New York where it's cold, cold. as heck. It's very cold bitter, up there. Bitter. Yes, Yes, it is. And uh, it wasn't uh, easy, it was horrible training. But we thought we were going to Santa Domingo, and I said, if, if we're going to Santa Domingo, it's hot down there, why are we this. training up here? Now, <laughs> let me ask you this, because I, I, I was a signal. Are you, what do you, as an artillery, are you trained to put the ammunition in, in the gun, or what, what do you actually do, what do you do? Well, I was a, a, a gunnery sergeant. After, okay. after uh, nine months, I was a sergeant. It means you were sergeant after nine months? Yeah. Congratulations. Rank was really, really fast. So I did all the uh, coordinates. Uh, so after. you figured out where you were shooting. Right. Which is <laughs> very important. Right. <laughs> okay. The FTC would call us. FTC, <laughs> the forward observers, forward, right. would call us and let us know the coordinates. And I would tune it in and I let everybody else. And I said, ready to load. And they would lock and load the tube. So that's what the sergeant did. He actually aimed it. Right. Okay. Right. And then the other guys would load the, uh, lock right. and load and shoot it. Okay. And we had an E6 who was in charge of all, oh, everybody. all of us in that one gun. So you're out practicing shooting cannons in snow, in snow. freezing weather. And we end up in Vietnam. So, okay. So <laughs> how long was the AIT? AIT was about six or seven months. Okay. Oh, so you have it was short. Oh, well, I guess so compared to what I had. Yes. So, okay, AIT, you think you're going to a warm weather climate, and what happens? Well, we thought we were going to Santa Domingo, and I was like, oh, that's not that's bad. Great, good duty. There's race riots here, but we can handle the riots. Yeah. Okay. So one day we get this word from uh, our uh, head, head sergeant, uh, and, and he said, fellas, our orders have been changed. We're uh -oh. going to Vietnam. <laughs> oh, I that, said, oh, my goodness. It was a warm weather climate. They didn't lie <laughs> yeah. to you, right? No, they didn't lie, but that's <laughs> not a place I wanted to go because I was hearing all the stuff that was going on. Yes. But we got there in 66, which was a little early. Yes, early in it. I didn't right. get there to 68, 69, so you were two years before me. So where did Long Bend, or where did you actually come in country? Well, we left Massachusetts on a ship. Oh, going spoke. to Vietnam, yeah. Oh, it, how long was that? It took 32 days. So you go through the Panama Canal that Went way? through the Panama Canal. Now, what's, <clears throat> I haven't had, what's it like being on a ship for 30 days as an E-5? Good, bad, or indifferent? Well, what we did is we did a lot of physical training. A lot of PT. Okay. We shot our guns off in the water. You actually shot yeah. the ca cannons off? Not the cannons, oh, no. our oh. rifles. Well, okay. Right. Now, M-14, M-16? M-16. Oh, you had M-16. We okay. had the M-16s, and uh, it was... PT on the boat okay. to, to keep Kill everybody time. fit, Kill yeah. Time. And uh, we had a lot of spare time, so we played a lot of cards. We okay. had fun. How was the chow? Uh, it wasn't too bad on a Navy ship, but once we got to Nama, the chow was in sea rations. So you had 30 days <laughs> on a ship. Now, did you stop on the American West Coast, or you just went through the canal we and kept on going? We went straight through. We went never through. stopped. Never stopped at all. So where did you land in Vietnam, do you remember? Well, yeah. We landed in a place called uh, Tainan City. Tainan City, yeah. It, 
it was nothing but just a rough area. It was all uh, uh, brush and weeds. And uh, so we built it up. And our first night there, we got hit with mortars. Very first night. The very first night. Welcome to Vietnam. <laughs> Absolutely. So Robert, first night in Vietnam, welcome to Vietnam, you get mortared. So <laughs> what, do you, what do you do? <laughs> well, when we were on the ship, we were told by the captain that this is a very dangerous area where we're going. We have to build a place up. We have to make our, our shelters. And as soon as you get there, dig your foxholes because we don't know what's going to happen. Oh, so, you, oh, so this was an area that they expected to. Right. Okay. So when we got there, we started digging our holes, and uh, I'm one for following instructions. Sure. If they tell me to dig a hole, dig I'm going to dig a hole. No. So <clears throat> we dug a hole, and uh, as soon as it got dark, we heard, <whistles> doop, so, head shoot. comes in coming rounds, yeah. and they were, like, coming in walking one after in. the walking, walking them in. in. And... Uh, and the first sergeant's yelling, hit the dirt, hit the dirt. And, and we had one guy that was running around mm -hmm. outside, and he's just running back and forth. And the first sergeant went out to, to tackle him and get him in. <laughs> and the first sergeant got hit. You get him in. Yeah, he got hit with a somebody mortar. else, he got hit. He got hit. So he was taken away the first night. Mm. One and, day uh, in Vietnam, he's medevac. He's medevac. Mm. So that put a scare in us because we all loved the first sergeant. His name was Top, <clears throat> and uh, he went out the first day, and that woke us up. Yeah, well, hey, this is a war. This is not yeah. games. This is real stuff. Did so, you, were you able to return fire? Or they just kept walking stuff in, and you guys were just hugging ground? We didn't. No, didn't have a chance to return. No. We didn't return fire at all that night. But the next day, we, we set up all our guns, and, of course, we had our M16s with us. We were told to be on alert. Be ready, because anything can happen. Yes, after the first night. And uh, so the next day, our mission started. Okay. We're going out into the boonies looking oh, so you for you were actually going out. You didn't stay at base camp. No, you went out. the very first day. And you're bringing your armor with you? Yes. Oh, Lord. They had to put us on Hueys, which is a, a helicopter with, with double yeah. engines. It could, it could take a heavy right. load. It could take a heavy load. So it took our, our 105s out. We had a small... Or artillery, so, so we could go where the infantry went. So we were out there at least four or five days a week. Mm. Wherever the infantry went, we went to back them up. Okay. So basically, you are giving them artillery support. Mm -hmm. So they're out there. You're out there. Absolutely. And yeah. Four or five days a week. Yep. Now, what was? Uh, we'll go back to out in the field. But what was base camp like? I mean, were the shelters there, dormitories, or what? Well, what happened was. We, we had a person in, uh, in our group that was a carpenter. Okay. So they left him back and three other people. Oh, to help build stuff. They built the, the sleeping quarters. Okay. They built uh, our shower. They built okay. housing for all the captains and, and everything. A shower that we never got to use. <laughs> I never got to use that shower. I, never had, I tell people... <laughs> I, for a year in Play Coup, I didn't have a warm shower. My shower is out in the uh, craters or in the yeah, river. Wherever there was water. Yeah, wherever there was water. How many people in your unit? Uh, in our, our 82nd artillery, there, had, there were six guns in our NA battery, and there were six people to each gun. Okay, so you were talking 36, in my math right? Right. 36? But we had a truck driver. Right. Yeah, all the support people, gun. Yeah. cooks so, and everybody else. Yeah, so there was six people on the gun and an E5, uh, E6. Uh, I was up for E6 when I was over there. And now you did great, E6. I mean. Well, I, I'm the type of person that I'm, I told my father, if, if I'm going to go in. You can do it right. I want to be the best I can be and make all the money I can make since sure, I have to be sure, there. Sure. So I was E5 in nine months, and they were going to offer me an E6 if I'd have stayed over there. But <laughs> no, no way. I said no. Well, people don't, I mean, you know it. When we were overseas, we didn't pay taxes. Right. We had overseas pay. I mean, we didn't make a lot of money, but for young hazard's kids. Hazard's duty pay. Yeah, hazard, we, we did all right, didn't we? Yeah. Financial. I mean, not great, but for the time, we didn't do bad. Well, back in the 60s, that was good pay. Yes. And I never spent my money. I, I never went on R&R. &R. 
They probably went to PX. Was there a PX where you were? Uh, yeah, we had a oh, PX. You had a PX. Oh, oh yeah, okay. yeah. But I never, never had went. an opportunity to go there because, okay. uh, because we weren't in basic camp that long. Okay, you were out in the field. Now, what was uh, basic camp wasn't bad except for occasionally they'd send mortars in just oh, to yeah. keep away. Well, now the field that uh, living off the ground, living off of ponchos, or how was that? Well. We were a support unit. Are you supporting the uh, infantry. infantry? So when we went out, we were like a mile or two behind the infantry. Right. So we had to dig our foxholes. We had to uh, sleep under tents. And sometimes we slept in our foxholes. Many times we were placed in areas where we had to sleep on the rice paddies, mm. uh, on the dikes for the rice paddies. Okay. And they had a lot of red ants. Those fiery ants, so you couldn't get any sleep. So I found myself sleeping on the trail of the uh, gun. They stay away from the ants. And yeah. Stuff. Okay. How about food? See rations? Or warm weather? Or, I mean, they bring in hot meals or what? <laughs> the only hot meal that I ever got was <laughs> okay. on on Thanksgiving. Well, people, the biggest thing for everyone out in the field, like yourself, other people we have in our veterans club, there are ten guys in the back, like me, mm -hmm. cooking meals, building buildings, driving trucks. But you guys out in the field, that's a whole different war, right? Well, our food was sea rations, uh, those cans. It's much yes. different now, but ours were cans. P-38 to open the can. P-38. And uh, my favorite was pound cake and peaches. Oh, I thought the desserts were always good. Remember the cinnamon roll and stuff like that? I yep. got that. But they had some... Uh, some other meals like potted meat. It was and, mystery meat. Was oh mystery my! Meat. I don't know what it was, but I didn't eat it. I, I used to trade it off for it. Well, Robert, I always had a meat. I was a non-smoker. And remember, they used to give you that little mini pack of cigarettes. Wait, wait. Four. Four. Was it three or four? And the smokers would say, "Mac, anything you want." Remember the there's a pecan roll cake in the sea ration. I was like the king of the pecan rolls, while the other guys were all smoking their cigarettes. Well, I didn't smoke until I went to Vietnam. Oh, yeah, okay. I didn't smoke at all, and. Uh, when I came back, I was smoking five packs a day. Mm, it drove you to smoke. Yeah, I didn't drink until I went to Vietnam, and all I drank over there was beer. But right. uh, and that was that military beer, whatever oh, they called it. Oh, yeah. that thirty-three. And it was made in their water, and you, you could hold up to the light and see <laughs> mud and stuff in it. But then we had an opportunity to kind of get Budweiser, and mm -hmm. and that was like a. A whole new refreshing episode. Well, Robert, I always thought it was exciting. You could go to the, I was in I was lower for you go to the EM club, a beer was five cents. For a dollar, you get twenty mm -hmm. beans. And, and as you know, it was pure water, right? Yeah. I mean, now, would you get? Uh, it doesn't sound like you did, but did you? Did you get any type of USO shows or donut dollies, or were you just too out in the too far out in the field? Well, they had USO shows over there, Bob. Hope, Hope was over there with, okay. with Nancy Sinatra, but we never got to go. No, you're too small a unit, right? Yeah. We were out in the field okay. the whole time. Uh, mm. We came back, and uh, we were back for like four days, and I said, this is great. So I built a basketball hoop. Me and the, being oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Me and f four of the guys in the carpenter, we built a basketball hoop. You played some ball. Yeah. Which is good. So we played ball over there. Now, did you make lifelong friends there, or was it kind of like me? I went into service, <clears> I hate to admit it. When I left, I left. It was a part of my life, you know, and just like as if a curtain came down. I'm not proud of that, but did, did you, guys you served with, did they remain friends? Or did you bond because you were, you were really fighting the war? Well, let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. uh, in Fort Devens, we, were, we all stayed together, and we all went to Vietnam together. Okay, the whole unit. Yes. We came back at separate times, right. but bonds were important. Yes. So I, I did make some really good bonds. There was a guy named Andrew McAvoy, my favorite friend. In fact, he was in my wedding. Oh, wow. Uh, he lives in Chicago. So he and I got together. Uh, and we decided that we wanted to have a 196 Light Infantry Brigade uh, social mm -hmm. oh, okay. every year. Oh, terrific. So we started out with four guys. And in two years, we were taking up a whole hotel. Good for you. Good All for the you. guys would come and they were happy to see each other. Sure. Uh, I knew a lot of the guys. They knew me. All of them w would say, hey, Sarge, how's it going? 
When you're in the military, they don't particularly like sergeants. <laughs> no, well, you, ha you have to give orders. Uh, absolutely. And you may make people dig holes and right. do things that they don't like to do. Right. But once it's all over. It's over. Uh, we were very good friends. In fact, uh, the first sergeant, we called him Top. He came to my wedding. Uh, I went to his house. M me and three of our friends went up there from the service. We went to his funeral when he died. Uh, Top was a really good guy. He was the first guy that left our unit in Vietnam. It was really sad when he got hit. Okay, that was no good. Well, let's go back. Let's go back to Vietnam out in the field. Duty. How would? How? I mean, was duty miserable, or was it? Could you live with it? Or I mean, artillery units not not a fun unit to be in. I I would think as a non-artillery guy. You tell me. I mean, was it constantly cleaning the weapon, preparing to fire the weapon, or what? Well, it was cleaning and getting ready for, for fire missions because the infantry was gone all the time. So we were always bringing the, the rounds over, getting ready. But it wasn't as bad as, as other people had it, as the infantry had it. Yes, okay. My brother was there at the same time I was, which wasn't supposed to happen, but it happened no, anyway. No. He was in the Marines. Oh, he's in the Marines. And uh, he had a really tough time. He, uh, those infantry men, God bless that's, them. That's a, they're real warriors, right? That's oh a whole my goodness, thing. Uh, I don't even classify myself as a warrior. They did. They did the heavy work. You can uh, see them when they come back in. They're all tired. Their eyes are. Well, they don't sleep. They don't no. eat properly. Mm -mm. Bathroom is basically on the ground. Right. Uh, hygiene, throw it out the window. We used to go to GI shower. With right. men in deodorant, right? That and and your feet got messed up oh. uh, because you couldn't it properly take care time. of them. Yeah. yeah. But Vietnam, it, it rained half the time and half the time was hot. So during the raining season, that's when you had problems with your feet and their yeah. Yeah, kind of Well, the everything. socks were never dry. The right. boots, I don't know how you felt, the boots, even boots were when I was wet. in Play Coup, Central Highlands, totally mm -hmm. different than what you had. But we had about, I think, 90 days where your underwear was always damp. Yep, your everything was damp. socks were always damp. There was no such thing as, oh, I'd like to, Your towels were damp, and it was the hardest thing to explain. Was your unit ever... I realize infantry, they've got a different word, but with the artillery unit, were you ever hit by... Did the enemy ever bring the battle to you? Well, one time, uh, we were set up in the field uh, on the rice paddies, and... and uh, the person in charge of our units sees all these people coming toward us. And he says, lock and load your beehive rounds. A beehive round has uh, nails and everything it in it. It shoots all types of junk. It's, it's, it's just like a shotgun. Scatter, scatters, That yes. scatters. So they said, lock and load the beehive rounds. T lower your tubes. So our tubes were lowered down to here. And uh, he said, get ready, get, get ready, because there's a, there's a bunch of people coming toward us. It just so happened that they were our units coming. Oh, okay. But we didn't know yeah. they, they were coming our way. We weren't told they were mm. coming our way. We could have had a disaster. Right? And another time, we went out in the field, and we were placed in a valley. Now, you don't put guns in a valley. No, no. People but we get were on placed top of you and shoot down it. We were placed in a valley, and I told everybody, dig in. We don't know how long we're going to be mm -hmm. here. This is a horrible spot, but we don't have any control over it. Dig in. Well, I'm the first one to dig my hole. Other people dug those, so the rounds started coming in. You can hear them. So they shooting mortars at you. They, they, they were shooting mortars in. So I go to jump in my hole, and there's two guys in my hole. <laughs> that get did, out, get out. That didn't dig a hole. Yeah. I said, "Get out!" Sure. You all, you all were told to survival of the fittest. I'm sorry. Absolutely. It's, 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 I, yeah. I got in my hole, but uh, we never got really hit as an artillery unit. But the things that we saw, and the things that we had to put up with, weren't weren't very good. Okay. Uh, or did you conducive. deal with the Vietnamese villagers or the Arvin at all? I mean, did you? No. 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 Okay. No. So you basically stayed with a bunch of GIs. We stayed with the GI. Job, supporting infantry. Now, we, we had a lot of the women that would that would come in our base camp and want to wash her clothes yes. and want to do right, things right. for us. But I told uh, our people, you have no idea who these people are. You don't know what they're going to bring right. on the base. Right. Do your own stuff. 
do your own washing, do, f make your own beds. Don't let them do anything yeah. for you. We Mama don't know who they are. The Mama San, you know yeah. what she's going to do? Mama San, hey, GI, you're number one. Well, we and then they're bringing this. in plastic explosives at night underneath right. the steps, right? And right. Up. My brother, uh, he got cut by a, a kid that was like eight years old. Mm. He got slashed right across the his knife. arm. Yeah. A banana knife. Because uh, he was a, a soldier, so he got cut. They were upset at him, so they just walked up and slashed his arm. And another one tried to explode a hand grenade. And mm. I said, you know. A child or an adult? A child. A child of that? Yeah, because. It was war. Yeah, There's it no was war. Rules. I mean, nobody knew who, was, who you were fighting. I get a kick out of Hollywood. They portray it Hollywood's way. That's mm. not it. It's survival of the fittest, and it's human beings down to their basic instincts that none of us are proud of. Right. But you're surviving. It's like you say, hey, that's my hole. I'm trying to, I want to live. I want to get in it, right? Which is great. Did you get R&R, Robert, out of country or in country? I had R&R, but I didn't take it. Oh, you didn't take it. Okay. My goal was to buy a GTO. Oh, you ready for Pontiac. Gas, so, tires, and oil. <laughs> <laughs> so I sent all my money home to my mother. Good for you. Good and you. I said, put this in the bank for me. So I, I never want an R&R. &R. I never cashed a check. I, I sent everything home. home. Nope, you. never cashed my check. You had at a all. nice little uh, bank account then. I had about 12 grand when I got Good back. For, man, yeah. That's a lot of money then. Oh, it was big time dollars, money, yeah. But I didn't buy the GTO. Oh, you didn't buy it? No, oh. I, I bought something else. Uh, I, I helped my mother redo the whole kitchen in her Good house. For you. Good so for you. Uh, I didn't buy the GTO. So you spend the 365 in Vietnam mm -hmm. with the artillery. Will you and then come back and get discharged, or did you have some station, duty station time back in the States? Well, when we got back in the States in 65, we didn't have to do any National Guard. We didn't have to do any duty time. Okay. They were told, or, or we were told that since you did your tour in Vietnam, you don't have to do any other you service. No, uh, no reserve. You, right, okay. unless you choose to. Terrific. Of course, I didn't choose to because I wanted out of the service. <laughs> Good for you. I enjoyed the time I was in there. Yeah. I made the best of it, but I wanted to get you out. You wanted to get out. Yeah. Get in. Now, yeah. obviously, you come out. Now, what, what, what was post-military life? Marriage, jobs, businesses, or what? Well, when we first started to come back from Nam, we were told, don't wear anything that lets people know who you are. uniform, right? But there were seven of us. We said, we're wearing our uniform. Of course. You're proud of it. We're proud of what yes, we've done. Of course. So we land in, in, in California, and uh, it was full of protesters outside. Now, were you in Fort Ord? Or were you in, uh, up in San Francisco area or down south? Uh, I can't remember the name okay. of the airport. Uh, anyway, you're in California. Yeah. Right. And we landed, and we get off the plane, and we walk outside. There's about 30 protesters out there throwing well, eggs on us. Really? Oh, yeah, throwing eggs This is 65. 65. This was early. Yeah. Yeah. They were throwing eggs, eggs, tomatoes, whatever yeah. they had. And they were hitting us with it. And I said, man, the heck with this. <laughs> I said, Lord. let's fight. Oh, you, oh, really? We went over there for a reason. So we started fighting them, and they <laughs> took off. They scattered. Actually, at the airport. Yeah, right outside the airport. 65. 65. That was, I mean, that was, oh, wow, that was terrible. So you, you fly into California, you're greeted. Uh, so you greeted. Know, that, oh, yeah. What a greeting. Yeah. <laughs> well, we used to hear these horror, horror stories. They warned us. We went to Fort Lewis. I had no problem. Matter of fact, when I got home, I was treated uh, uh, terrifically. But we'd hear stories. Hey, some of the bases are going to be protesters, et cetera. And you say, I just gave a year of my life. Right. And someone's going to complain. We didn't want to go. I know. I didn't want to you go want there. To go to, you want to, to go to the warm weather spot, but not Vietnam. I was right? told to go there. Yes. I followed orders. I did what I was told to do. And I wanted to come back to a country that was proud of what we yes. did. Yes. But we came back to a country that didn't appreciate us at all. Well, we, as you know, we talk in our veterans group that meets on Mondays. A lot of guys didn't mention they were in the service 10, 20 years. Yeah, because it's not something that I would talk about a, a long time ago right. for fear of, of repercussion. And I didn't want to have to fight over here because I fought You've over been there. Fighting. He's just spent 365 right. days fighting. Crazy. So I didn't talk to anybody about it for a long time. Okay. So when I came back, I... Uh, my first job was working for DC Transit. That was the only oh, job yeah, I could get. DC Transit. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I was. I, that's where I was born and raised in DC. Yeah. yeah. I went. I wanted to be a state trooper, so uh, 
I went to see uh, Sergeant Davis, who was from my hometown, who was the was the D.C. chief of police. Oh, okay. So I talked to him about it. He said, Robert, he said, uh, you're an angry person. He, he said, it's not a good idea for you to be Have a, a, gun. a, a yeah. police officer yeah. Yeah. because yeah. you just got back uh, from Vietnam. So why don't you find another oh, occupation? Oh, really? You're yeah. So I said, okay, thanks. So I called my dad, and he was friends with my dad. So my dad said, follow his advice, son. So I went to work for transit, and I stayed there for about oh, eight you years. Oh, DC Transit? Oh, my goodness. I was a bus Everything. driver. Oh, oh, were you really? What route did you have? I did all, a, a lot of routes uh, out of Northeast. I went okay. to uh, sure. Mount Pleasant, oh, Silver okay. Spring, Benning yeah. Road. Well, I used to take the bus from Chevy Chase Circle every day. Not Friendship Heights. Friendship Heights. Friendship Heights, Heights every day to College Park when I went to college. Mm -hmm. That was, I don't know whether it was still DC Transit there or a Metro or whatever it was in 69, 70. Mm -hmm. But that was, oh, that's funny, you were a bus driver. I probably had you as a bus driver and didn't know it. Well, you, you might have. But it's not a job that I wanted to do. It was a job that I could do when I first got sure. back. Okay. So after that, I took some courses uh, in, in English and math, and I decided that this bus driving is not for me. Which was something different. So uh, I decided to get the restaurant business. Good. And you owned restaurants, correct? Yeah, I owned uh, seven IHOPs. You had seven IHOPs. Mm -hmm. That kept you busy. It did. Uh, it was good, but it... Had, it had its ups and downs. Your own business is 24-7, right? And everything, you have to watch everything because you have so many business partners that you don't know. Who's doing what? Who your partner is. Oh, yeah. So it, it was a tough go at times, but uh, I got out of that. Uh, I didn't choose to get out of it. They chose me. Okay. Oh, yeah. Now, let's move on a bit. The family tradition is continued. You were in the service. Were you, was your dad in the service? No. Okay. He was not in the service. But your son... Is in the service. Tell my us my yeah. son, Robert Jr., he's in the Marines. Currently, 2024, he's in the Marines. Right. He went to uh, Queen Anne's High School. And uh, when he got out, he decided to go to college. And he spent one year in the, there and he said, college isn't for me. I don't want it, yeah. So I said, so what are you going to do? He said, well, I'm going to join the SEALs. So I said, okay. Well, he was a good swimmer okay. uh, because we have a pool at our house. And uh, he went out and took the test for the SEALs, and he passed all the tests. And he said, how long uh, do, do, I I go in? do I have to wait to go in? Yes. They said, maybe six months. He said, I don't want to wait that long. Oh, he was ready. He yes. Was ready. So they said, well, go back, build up your, your swimming skills a little more, and come back and see us. Well, he did. He was swimming all the time. This all is a good time. athlete. This is a kid um, who was a good athlete. Oh, he yeah. played football. Yeah. I coached yeah. him in basketball. He ran track. Uh, he did martial arts. I, uh, I used to work with him in martial arts. So <clears throat> he went back and he took the test, and he, he scored higher, and he said, now how long? He, so he said, maybe three months. He said, never mind. So the next day he what? went down and joined the Marines. He's, and he's now stationed at? He's stationed in Okinawa, Japan. Uh, he's an E-6. What's he do? What's his MOS? He's in charge of all the armory. Oh, okay. Uh, Perfect. And he goes from one country to another. Checking on armories. Uh, checking to see how they fit and, and seeing if their quotas up to par and, and see how they're doing it. He likes what he's doing now, but he, uh, he wants to be back in the States. So he has another year and a half over well, He's there. doing all right as an E6, right? He's, hey, I don't know how you felt. E, well, you did it E5. As soon as you get to be an NCO, life's a little different. Right? It gets a little easier for yeah. you. I mean, you have more responsibility. But you don't have to dig the holes, clean the toilet, right. et cetera, et cetera. Right. Well, he, uh, he's a good Marine. Uh, good. I thought that he would be an E7 or E8 by now because, because of all the, uh, the things all that the he's things done. All the things going on. Has he, has he been in combat areas? No, no, okay. no. Uh, he's got a lot of letters from congressmen uh, about his achievements. Good. and. Terrific. Uh, uh, they want him to be a warrant officer. Uh, Good friend. Oh, tell him to go W.O., the best rank in the... I don't know how you feel. <laughs> you're between... You're an officer, but you're right in the middle. Nobody's Absolutely. messing with Nobody you. Nobody messes with you. They said, offered yeah. me... Right, no, Robert, this is how crazy. They offered me... E, this is 1969. Fred will make you E6. We'll send you to M.I.W.O. school. And, you know, I was like... I was like you. I want to be a civilian again, but I could have retired at 39. Imagine if you had W04. That's mm -hmm. like a colonel's pay, right? Yeah. And, mate. and you got bars up here, right? 
my son's going to be, uh, he's going to stay 20. He said he's going to try to do 30. I said, well, that's up to you, son, whatever you decide. Get to, to 20 do. and get out. Get to 20 and get out. Well, he's, he, he's, he's young. He's, he's 30 years old. He's been okay. in 10 years. Oh, so he's looking good. He'll be a young man one way or the other, yeah, right? Let's yeah, absolutely. Well, Robert, look at our time's about up. First of all, thank you for your service. Thank okay, you. I really well, you're more than welcome, and Fred. please tell your son thank you for his I service, will. okay? I will. My name is Fred McNeil. Thanks for watching. Thank you for your service. We'd like to thank all the veterans out there, Robert, his son, those of you who served and have served, and watch us every Monday, okay, for our great show honoring our veterans. I'm Fred McNeil. My time's up. Thank you for your time. We're going to see you next time. Mm -hmm.